Good morning, class. Welcome back from your holidays. I hope you had a nice time with your family members and your holidays was well spent. Okay? We thank God. Now, this is Bio 125, Practical Biology 2. I will be taking Session C, which is basically Microbiology. I am K.O. Idaho. Now let's look at the history of microbiology and microscopy. Microbiology was born in 1674 when Atano van Leeuwenhoek, who lived between 1632 and 1723, a Dutch drapery merchant who paired with others to have a breakthrough in microbiology. Other prominent scientists who have aided the, the processes of microbiology are Robert Hooke, an English scientist who made key observations on microorganisms. Francisco Reddy, who disputed the theory that microorganisms arise from lifeless matter, such as beef broth. He showed that fly mangoes do not arise from decaying meat, as others believed. And who had John Nedhum as one of the great scientists, Lazaro Spallanzani, who disputed the theory by showing that boiled broth would not give rise to microscopic forms of life. And of course, the greatest of it all, to me, Louis Pasteur, who discovered bacteria in milk and propounded a theory that if that milk is exposed to heat between 60 to 105 degrees Celsius, the microorganisms will no longer be there. It will reduce microbial load in milk. Hence, today we'll have a process called pasteurization in milk processing. Now, development of microbiology actually started in the 18th centuries. And of course, the first decade of the 90s, when scientists seized the opportunity to further develop the germ theory of disease as enunciated by Pasteur and others. Modern biology, sorry, modern microbiology started when there was a need for the use of microscope that would magnify the size of an, of an organism that was believed to be causing disease germ in human beings. As is that time, microbiology as a study of microorganisms was established, were established, and then a group of people, scientists, were always coming together to look at microbes from different point of view. And at the end, they believed that organisms like bacteria, archaea, algae, fungi, protozoa and viruses exist, but they cannot be seen with the naked eyes. And that prompted some people to go into what we call bacteriology, that is the study of bacteria, how they live, how they derive their nutrients and exist in the environment. Let me tell you something. Microorganisms, particularly bacteria, they can utilize the nitrogen in the air to form their own protein. And as such, even if there's no broth for them to live in, they can still survive by enhancing the nutrients in the air. Now, what is the relevance of this microbiology to us, to you, for example, as a young scientist? The study of micro, microorganisms has also advanced the knowledge of all living things. Microbes are easy to work with, and those provide and thus provide a simple vehicle for studying the complex processes of life. It is quite relevant for us to know the relevance of microbiology because if we do not identify exactly what is causing an AMA, that is during a diagnosis now, it will be very difficult to treat the, the disease, especially for those that are looking at like the virus family. They look alike, and if you are not careful, if you assume one to be the other, treatment of a particular disease that is caused by that particular virus becomes a problem. Therefore, microbiology is quite relevant to us 
even today. Now let's look at the microscopy itself. Microscopy started actually when there was a need for more intense development in observing objects that are living that cannot be seen with the naked eyes. The word microscopy comes from a Greek word that is micros meaning small and then of course scop scopio that is to view meaning microscopy is the procedure involved in the observation of tiny objects that cannot be seen with the naked eyes with the aid of a magnifier in this case a microscope so the microscopy procedures they are quite relevant to us and you must know each of the stages in microscopy the first thing you do is to mount the specimen on the stage of the microscope that you are using and then optimize the lighting system so that the object can be seen they adjust the condenser that will provide the stage and the lighting system to observe the object in such a way that it will be magnified and the parts will be seen then you ask yourself what are you looking for is it the cell or the nucleus itself or what by the time you consider what you are looking for then you focus locate what you are looking for and then center this the specimen adjust the eyepiece so that you can view the object directly from the eyepiece and then select an object lens for viewing in most cases you start with 10 the lowest 10 times magnification 20 30 40 and then 100 in some cases you may require oil immersion just to make the object viewing very clear then adjust the illumination for the selected object objective lens and you'll be able to view the object correctly and you observe then the types of microscopy now for example we have we have electron microscopy this will utilize electron beam replacing light to form the image you have the fluorescence microscopy this is based on the fact that the fluorescent materials emit vis visible light when they are irradiated with ultraviolet rays and you have the immune electron microscopy you have the immune fluorescence microscopy no masky microscopy time lapse microscopy dark feed microscopy light microscopy which is quite common light microscopy is quite common and then you have the optical microscopy forensic microscopy and finally you have the fluorescence and ultraviolet microscopy so in this case there is no way you will learn all this without actually knowing what a microscope is the microscope is an instrument that is used in observing or viewing an object during microscopy so we have some types that you may not be able to use unless a technical staff will need to assist you for example the scanning tunneling microscope electron microscope transmission electron microscope and then acoustic microscope that will utilize sound sound and then environmental scanning electron microscope you have the scanning electron microscope and feed emission microscope there are also some that are quite important to us especially in modern microbiology that is the high voltage electron microscope in all this you must learn all in such a way that you understand everything about microscope and microscopy there are some that are also referred to as s-ray microscope s-ray microscope in all this you need to care for the microscope itself in such a way that you can keep using it for, for from from time to time and you need to keep it in its condition that will be used by all not only the students other scientists may come from different parts of the world or within Asarawa state here and then use our laboratory in case there are needs for microscopy so 
such care for microscope will require holding a microscope fairly by the stand. Do not hold it on the eyepiece. You may break the eyepiece. So the best is to hold it on the stand firmly and don't allow it to fall off from your hand. Grab it properly. And then hold the plug, not the cable this time, the plug that you, you sat inside the main. Hold it with the, with the stand as you carry it, maybe from point A to another point. Then turn the illuminator off whenever you want to do this. That is moving a microscope from one point to another. You must turn off the light or the illuminator. Always make sure the stage and lenses are clean before putting away the microscope. Before use, you need to clean the microscope. And after use, you need to also clean the microscope. Never use a paper towel, a nap, nap wipe or a cream wipe or your shirt. Some people, maybe if you are looking for material to use, may just quickly choose to use your shirt. No, it is not ideal. It is improper to use your shirt or any other material that can cause low quality lens for viewing. Then there is a special coating that you need to use that is made for cleaning the lens alone. And when you finish doing all this, cover the instrument, that is the, mic the microscope, with a dust jacket. It's just like you have your car jacket. The microscope also has a jacket. You cover it when it is not in use and you keep it properly. Then focus smoothly and do not try to speed through the focusing process or force anything. For example, if you encounter increased resistance when focusing, then you've properly reached the limit and don't force it so that you will not break the, the knob. So thank you for listening. But before we go, for this week, we have talked about the history of microscope, microbiology, sorry. We have talked about the, the origin of microbiology, and we observed that microbiology actually started long ago when the like of Pasteur discovered organisms that were causing diseases to humanity but could not be seen with the naked eye. That now resulted in the use of microscopy, that is, creating an object that can view these little or tiny organisms such a way that it will be magnified and it will be obvious for the eyes to understand the structure of the microorganisms. And we also looked at the, if the relevance of microbiology to us. The relevance, if there is no microscopy, for example, we will not be able to identify which microorganism is causing a particular ailment that will lead us to the treatment or even eradication of such an ailment in our society today. Thank you for your attention.